Hi, I'm Aaron Newworth with Vetify. I'm joined by Mark Carlson, Senior Investment Strategist at FlexShares Exchange Traded Funds. How are you doing, Mark? Good, Aaron. Nice to be back with you again. For sure. So, many investors are fearing a potential U.S. recession given the impact of inflation and the Federal Reserve's actions to dampen pricing pressures. Can you talk about what the Fed hopes to achieve and what it means for the outlook of, for interest rates in the next 6 to 12 months? Yeah, sure, Aaron. So, the... Uh... The Fed is now fully focused on bringing inflation back to their preferred level of 2% on the, the PCE, the Personal Consumption Expenditure Index. And it now is obvious to most people that the Fed committed the policy era to continue easy monetary policy after the economy had already regained its footing from the COVID crisis. The fiscal stimulus and easy money policies overstimulated demand in the economy before supply chains were ready to address higher demand. And then the conflict in Russia and Ukraine doubled down on the many of the supply issues. With the shadow of 1970-style entrenched inflation looming over the economy, the members of the FOMC are seeking to take decisive action to prevent higher inflation expectations. The goal is to slow growth without triggering a recession or also the ever elusive soft landing. We can look for clues in the markets on just how successful the Fed might be. And the Treasury market is giving us one very good outlook. The Treasury's forward curve, looking out six months and one year into the future, showed a yield curve flattening as the Fed is committed to bringing the Fed funds rate into neutral or restricted territory in order to address, address inflation. As a result, the three year and shorter maturity part of the curves will bear the brunt of rate increases while the intermediate and longer term portions of the yield curve appear to be well anchored. The rate moves will be, um, will be enough to invert the two tens portion of the yield curve. And this is one indicator that uh, investors closely watch for a potential sign of a recession. However, the forward treasury yield curves uh, on the two tens inversion is minimal at roughly 10 to 15 basis points. So the market is giving the Fed the benefit of the doubt that they can achieve a soft landing with the current outlook for rate actions. Now, we all know conditions can change, so investors must be mindful of potential alternative outcomes. All right, well, if the Fed cannot navigate a soft landing and does contribute to driving the U.S. economy into a recession, how can investors position their fixed income portfolios to protect capital and potentially take advantage of the situation? Yeah, at, at this point, there appears to be an asymmetrical outlook for potential outcomes as the downside losses from a too hard of landing or a recession outweigh the odds that the Fed will turn neutral to dovish before fully containing inflation. And with that scenario, investors may be well served to do some of the following ideas. First would be to barbell their term exposure. What I mean by that is because duration position is so critical, to expect the returns on fixed income portfolios. Investors should be concerned about a recession due to the rate action of the Fed, would be well advised to combine fixed income investments with a barbell approach of very short maturities, say one year and shorter, along with long dated exposure, 20 to 30 year exposure, balancing to their preferred duration. The short end of this, uh, this position would reprice yields quickly should rates rise and um, the longer end of the position could see yields fall as the market discounts yields lower in the future due to, the due to a potential recession. And this strategy avoids the intermediate part of the yield curve that could see the potential for the most negative total return due to the pressure of the Fed raising interest rates in order to curb inflation. A second step would be to move up in quality. Uh, a recession would cause credit spreads to widen, obviously. And as the market demands greater compensation for credit risk, investors could look to moving uh, up, the credit, up the credit quality curve to safe havens such as treasuries, agencies, and high quality asset-backed securities and MBS. Additionally, they could look to moving up in quality and investment grade and high yield corporate issuers. Now, while high yield would clearly bear the greatest impact of a credit spread widening scenario, the high yield sector is currently in its best financial position since its inception back in the 1980s, meaning the sector could possibly withstand increased economic pressure 
and still limit defaults, unlike previous credit downturns. With its risk premium yields, high yield would still likely remain an attractive asset class, even in a mild recession. And then lastly, investors will need to be prepared to pivot. Once the Fed has achieved its inflation goal, and depending on where unemployment in the economy sits, investors should be ready to move quickly out of the short end of the curve and into the intermediate and long-term sections in order to take advantage of total returns from declining rates as inflation moderates and the the Fed balances its inflation and full employment mandates. What overarching advice would you provide for weary investors for the second half of the year following the market's poor performance during the first half? Well, I would use the old old adage, remain calm and carry on. Yes, you know, the U.S. and global economies will be dealing with stresses of unwinding the amount of debt undertaken to address the economic carnage of COVID. However, consider what shocks the markets have absorbed over the last 50 years and have lived to tell, tell the tale again and again. Also, remember that hope is not a strategy. Gather good information, useful information, and don't hesitate to take portfolio actions if warranted. Another thing I would do is look at tax loss harvesting. Selling an investment is one of the most difficult decisions for an investor. Do your portfolio a favor. Sell an investment that isn't working towards your overall goals and gain a nice tax break to go with it. Next, I would tell people, to, given, given the changes in uh, the economy and changes in the uh, lifestyle of the uh, U.S. and global um, uh, populations because of the COVID crisis is to review your long-term investment objectives. Now may be a good time to revisit and to adjust those goals, and if needed, take actions to realign your portfolio. And I would also recommend that never forget that diversification is the only true free lunch in investing. While correlations between asset classes have been hot, much higher since the great financial crisis, we are seeing some breakages in these correlations, and eventually, the investment strategy. Uh, allocating between equity, fixed income, real assets, and alternatives should once again provide diverse, less volatile overall returns. Well, once again, thank you, Mark. We appreciate your insights and look forward to speaking again soon. Thanks, Aaron.